So when looking for a graphics card, what is the main factor that you look for when you're purchasing one? Is it the design? Is it the aesthetic? Is it the performance or is it the price? I'll leave that one up to you, but today I'm going to be taking a look at the MSI Gaming Series GTX 980 um, Gaming 4G, which is based off NVIDIA's latest Maxwell. Let's see how it performs. So the MSI GTX 980 comes in a gaming theme box. Um, it sports a nice red and black colour scheme with obviously um, on the front having an MSI G Gaming Series crest sponsored by Fnatic logo. Obviously Fnatic are, um, are affiliated with MSI. You've also got such features and obviously which I mentioned such as the VRAM the new Twin Frozer 5 design, or Twin Frozer V, as it would say, be in Roman numerals. This is actually the overclock edition, but there isn't any other GTX 980 gaming MSI cards about, so, you know, it's pretty obvious that this is what you're going to get. So, looking to the back of the box, we obviously have different thumbnails with different features of the new cooler, which is the Super Sue Pipe, the Hybrid Frozer, which allows you to customize the fans so you can have one the left fan on the left the right fan off the right fan at like 50 percent the left fan you know whatever you want it's fully customizable through the app the torx fan they are 95 mil fans so there's two of them so this helps dissipate the heat effectively in terms of accessories we have a gaming series products booklet an MSI Gaming Quick User's Guide, MSI's Driver Installation CD, and a 6 to 8 pin PCI power adapter. So touching more on the design of the MSI GTX 980 Gaming 4, we have a new cooler, um, the Twin Frozer 5. Now this features a semi-passive cooler design, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, Main, the, main, the main focus of this is if you're watching, say, a film or you're browsing the internet or reading emails, the fans won't be spinning up. This is, if, of course, if you've got it set to automatic. Um, you can set a manual fan profile and each of the fans are modular, so you can have, say, 50% on the left fan and 30% speed on the right fan. I mean, it's, it's, it's very gimmicky, but I, I do like it. It's a nice touch and it's nice to have the option. So, the, so what you'll notice here is the PCB of the graphics card itself is black, but what you will notice is there is no backplate. Now a lot of the, the GTX 980s that have been on the market and um, released, such as Aces, etc., have, have included backplates, which is a very nice thing. It looks better aesthetically inside the case. It neatens up, um, it looks straighter, it just overall looks better. Now, one can forgive MSI for this, but MSI have actually used their own custom PCB with the card. They've included high, more VRMs, more um, phase power phases, which obviously, you know, increases the overclocking capability. It allows for a lot higher overclocks um, than you would, would get with other models. It is worth noting to power this card, you will need a power supply with at least one times eight pin and one times six pin, as there is a one six pin to eight pin adapter in the accessories. But you know, if you have got two eight pins, it will be a lot better um, saves I don't like using adapters and in my recommendation I would say at least a 500 watt power supply of good quality such as you know an Enamax, a Corsair, Seasonic, um, Be Quiet etc. Specs wise with the GTX 980 being based off the Maxwell the power consumption is considerably lower than the likes of the 680s that obviously were predecessed by the 780s. Now one thing about this card, it has 2048 CUDA cores, um, which is fantastic, you know, it's good. It's more than the 780 Ti, um, which was the high-end card for gaming. Um, obviously, Titans are relevant because it wasn't really designed for game, but it was powerful. Um, and one thing I will mention as well, that the 980 supports four-way SLI, is G-Sync ready. Um, and it features NVIDIA's GPU Boost 2.0 technology. Now we've talked a bit about the specs, what the card looks like, how it's designed, what comes with it, what's featured. Now let's actually see how it performs against other cards that we've tested. 
So as we can see by the 3D Mark graphs, the MSI GTX 980 performs very well on the performance preset, um, the Extreme preset, and obviously Fire Strike Normal and Extreme 2. Um, it is only superseded by the Zotac GTX 980 Amp Edition, um, the Extreme version, which has absolutely insane overclocks out of the box. I don't think there's any stock 980 that's going to catch it at the moment. But, you know, the MSI does perform fantastically. This is exactly the same case in Battlefield 4 at 1080p, where the GTX 980 Amp Edition Extreme from Zotac pips out due to the stupidly insane overclock out of the box. The GTX 980 Gaming, however, from MSI does very well, and at 1080p it pips out the Asus 980 GTX Strix overclock. The only thing is, though, at 1440p, our graph shows the Strix slightly above the gaming card by 1 FPS, but obviously that is very marginal. Now, at stock, the 980 Gaming Edition can't really do um, 60 FPS standard um, and consistently at 1440p, which is a little disappointing, but obviously an overclock will alleviate this. One of the more recent graphically intensive games to come out is Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, which is effectively um, Lord of the Rings style world in Mordor. Now, as you can see, the GTX 980 gaming is pretty much streets ahead of the 970 gaming by at least 15 FPS plus. This also sits miles above the Sapphire R9 285 Dual X card itself. Now, at 1440p, it becomes slightly different. Obviously, we have got the Amp Extreme Edition in this one as well. Um, and the MSI beats it, which is absolutely superb. Um, both of these leave the Asus 980 Strix in the dust. FIFA also delivers pretty expected results with the GTX 980 Gaming from MSI sitting second place. However, at 1440p with the cards we tested on this particular benchmark, the 980 Gaming delivers an average of 62 FPS, which is very, very, very good. It means at 60 FPS, you can play at 1440p at Thief, whereas the GTX 970 Gaming from MSI also can't do this. Tomb Raider is also very friendly towards the GTX 980 Gaming from MSI, which on 1080p sits at 100 FPS average, which is very, very, very admirable, well above the 60 FPS and for the 60 hertz required for 60 hertz monitors, of course. At 1440p, this is also at 66 FPS, which allows for solid stream and lag-free gaming, no tearing, and with averages of over 60 FPS. In the latest World of Warcraft expansion, Warlords of Draenor, the results are very surprising at 10 to be on 1440p, with the extra graphics power over the MSI GTX 970 gaming null and void here. It really trade and blows. This is a pretty CPU intensive game, so that is more likely to make a factor and a difference over, say, the graphics card will. But here are the results nevertheless. With the temperatures here, we've taken the delta temperature, which is the core temperature minus room temperature, which gives you the delta. Now, the lower the better here. Now, as you can see, the gaming GTX 980 gaming isn't exactly the coolest card at idle. Um, this is due to the fact that it has a passive cooler. As I mentioned with the new Twin Frozen 5 cooler, it's passive. So, what you get there is you've got no sound, but at the cost of extra heat, which obviously, as you can see, like the Strix edition, that also has a passive cooler design as well. However, at 100% load, the MSI gaming beats the Zotac um, by, by one degree. Very marginally between, say, the 980 and the 780, um, with a couple of degrees difference in the 780's favour, of course. But the 980 does very well and is well within regulation temperatures. Both the clock on the MSI GTX 980 4G graphics cards is... It was a very, very, very good experience. This card, due to the custom PCB, the extra power phases available on the card, it allowed me to overclock to stupid amounts. Um, I ended up with a GPU clock of 1366 megahertz on the car, which effectively is a 1467 megahertz boost. But what, what I did find with this is it boosted well over 1500 megahertz due to the extra headroom it allows you with the GPU's boost to technology, which is absolutely fantastic, I might add. As you can see by the results in 3D Mark 11 and 3D Mark Firestrike, the 
the difference between, say, the Amp Edition um, from Zotac with the stupidly insane overclocks out of the box, the MSI 980 Gaming Overclocked absolutely destroys it. It sits miles ahead, at least a thousand points ahead in 3D Mark 11, and in Fire Strike it sits, you know, over a thousand points as well. It sits well at the top, and it is by far the fastest GTX 980 that I have currently seen, and I am probably likely to see, unless, of course, MSI bring out a lightning card. Battlefield 4 is pretty pretty much the same. It matches the Extreme Amp Zotac Edition in 1080p at Ultra, of course, at maximum settings. But at 1440p, this actually, unlike uh, when it's unoverclocked, when it is overclocked, it averages over 60 FPS, which is fantastic. Exactly what you need. So yeah, the MSI GTX 980 Gaming Edition um, with four gigabits of VRAM is an actually it's a very good card. Um, the kicker here is the price. Now this retails for around 450 um, Great British Pounds or Sterling, Spondulis, whatever you want to call it. And although the differences between this particular card and the MSI GTX 970 um, isn't all too much, synthetically in likes of 3D Mark, um, things like that, the differences are supreme, you know, the, the, the 980 is a much better card in that respect. But for 1080p gaming, you'd be better off with probably the 970, unless you're going to be using 1440p or 4K resolutions, which is when this bad boy comes into play. I mean, this, the GTX 980 offers absolutely unrivaled performance at the moment. Um, AMD have got absolutely nothing, nothing to... Um, shout about at the moment hopefully they'll bring the new cards out soon which will probably put a bit of a price difference on one of these bad boys but yeah so aside from the obvious factors the twin frozen 5 cooler as most people who know me know i love i've got two 970s in the system over there msi gaming and i love them i mean i'm not biased or anything um i mean I mean, negatively, if I had to say something negative about this particular card is, one, the price, um, but then again, with Nvidia, with a top performing card on the market, you get what you pay for, you know, you are, you're not going to get bang for buck with the top end cards, never have done, never will do, um, that will continue to go on and on and on, but negatively, I mean, the lack of backplate really concerns me a little, MSI actually... I'm sure I've seen some custom backplates made. There's, there's a couple of custom modders who have made backplates for the, for the 970 and who are currently selling them. I would prefer to, for it to come as standard, you know, the 980 Strix from Asus comes with one. Gigabytes G1 Gaming, which is effectively just the WinForce Time 3 cooler, um, comes with one. So I'm, I'm a bit shocked to see this hasn't come with one, but you know, it is a fully custom PCB. There is, extra vrm power there is power phase extra in there as well um two times eight pin to power the thing which is you know it's, it's not exactly you know value for money but you know as i've said it is a top performing card and i am happy to award the msi gtx 980 with our gold award with our performance award and editor's choice because to be honest it's probably my favorite card of um well, since, since ever really you know um i do love this card and i do feel bad that i'm gonna have to part ways with it soon but i have got my two t two um 970s to keep me company in the meantime but yeah guys thanks for watching please check out the rest of our videos um welcome to 2015 at player um i've been gavin Thanks for watching guys, ciao for now.